The Bar Star Podcast, hosted by Stephen O'Reilly, is a podcast about working musicians, their friends, and their opinions. Stephen is a musician in Louisville, Kentucky, who has... Wait a second. This guy's a drummer, not a real musician? Somebody gave a drummer a microphone for his voice? The hell? Unreal. Unbelievable. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of the Bar Star Podcast. I am your host, Stephen O'Reilly. I want to thank you guys for taking the time out of your day to come back to hang out with my silly ass. I appreciate it. I appreciate the ratings and the reviews. Keep those coming. Please keep those coming. When you guys give me reviews, it just helps new people find the shows, uh, find the episodes, and it keeps me focused and driven to keep doing this to bring this to new listeners and for you guys that have been with me for a while tell your friends tell the wrestler tell your mom and them tell everybody about the show Uh, i would greatly appreciate it please take a moment to check out my sponsors prophecy inc and louisville music studios prophecy is located in the fabulous highlands in louisville kentucky go in the shop mention the bar star podcast you will get 10 percent off your tattoo by any artist in the shop not just travis I actually drove by there the other day, and they've got some cool shit in the front window. It's actually pretty neat what they do. They always change the front window stuff. Looks really awesome. Also, Louisville Music Studios is a sponsor of the show. Some things are changing over there, which I'm sure you have figured out that this episode will be about, because this is the return of David Payne. This is not a repeat show. This is not a recycled show. This is a new show, which we will get to that in a second. And I almost forgot. I hope everybody had a good week. I hope everybody is doing well. And as always, I hope you guys went out and did some shit. Also, make sure you check out my website, barstarpodcast.com. You can also email me at barstarpodcast at gmail. If you have any questions, concerns, ideas for the show, or you want to tell me to go fuck myself because I'm a douchebag, I don't really care. Whatever. That's all the info. If you go to my website, feel free to pick up a t-shirt, help support the show. You can also use Amazon. You can get to Amazon through my website. Use the Amazon link. Uh, They give me a little bit of a kickback. Just helps out the show that I do bring you for free every week or the last month every other week. Cut me some slack. I'm a little busy. Be a little goddamn busy. And last but not leastly, please make sure you check out... Yeah, I know. I totally just said leastly. No. I'm not going to edit that out. Last but not leastly, I'll say it again. Make sure you check out Delana Rocks. Keep up with everything that she's got going on uh, because the tour is coming soon. It's a little under a month away. Maybe a month, maybe over a month. What the fuck is today? I don't even know. Oh, no. It's a little under a month away. So make sure you check that out. Keep up with what we're doing. Uh, The rehearsals have been going awesome. I'm super excited. We've been videoing her in Holland which is really fucking weird because she's we're rehearsing without her. It's bizarre. But it's also awesome because that means that when she gets here and we rehearse, it's just going to be that much better. But I will read you really quick the dates, and at the end of this episode, I will tell you more details about each date. But it is June 21st in Green Bay, June 22nd in Hazel Green. Those are both Wisconsin, obviously. June 24th is London, Ontario, Canada. June 26th is Windsor, Ontario, Canada. June 28th is Cleveland, Ohio. And June 29th is Richmond, Indiana. <gasps> That's a mouthful. Okay, so it's enough of that. I will give you the, the more details at the end of this on the other side of my conversation with David Payne. He called me and wanted to sit down with me and talk about some stuff because most of my Louisville people know there's been some... Changes being made at Louisville Music Studios. The rest of you guys that do not live in Louisville, you do not know what in the blue fuck hell I'm talking about, but that's okay. David and I always have fun when we sit down and have a conversation, so this is just as fun as normal, but it is a little bit more serious. It's not that long. Uh, He didn't want to get into a whole lot of messy details, but he does explain some things that's going on with Louisville Music Studios. And like I said, he gave me a call and wanted to talk to me about it, wanted to use the show. He is a sponsor of my show, and he wanted to use this platform to talk about what's going on over there. So that is pretty much what this episode is about. So with all my shilling out of the way, 
And uh, all my apologies for not going every week and skipping a week here and there. Sorry, not sorry. A little busy. Uh, let's get to my conversation with Louisville Music Studios owner David Payne. Blinking, we got numbers. Hey, can you hear me over there? I can hear you. Oh my god, you're so cute. We sound like we're in your studio. Actually, we're in my home away from home, which is your studio. I know, but I like your, uh, it sounds really good. Good oh, quality. Thanks. Good interview quality. Thanks. Okay. So, uh, welcome back to the Buzz Jar Podcast. Hey, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Today is a, is a special day for you. Why? Uh, well, because a few hours ago you called me and said, "Hey, I got some stuff I want to talk about, and uh, let's do your show." And I went, uh, "Yes, sir." And here we are. Well, thanks for having me. Thanks for thanks for calling me back. No, I'm happy. Not to. that I don't see you enough. I see you all the fucking time. Well, I have no time for you normally. I, I know you. But don't. I've made time for you today. Oh, I made time for you. But too. you've been asking me to do this. Well, I have because we have a lot of unanswered questions. Uh, I I never have questions. I'm an idiot. Well, no, you don't, but I'm sure everybody else does. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Okay, so uh, we are at LMS. I am with the owner and my friend, David Payne. Thanks for having me back again. Th thanks for coming back again. We're not going to be talking about things we talked about last time. No, we're not going to be talking to Teabag. You, when you called me this morning, you said you had some stuff that you wanted to get off your chest, and... Uh, you asked if you could do it on my show, and I said, absolutely, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, I mean, I think the show's perfect for, uh, you know, local musicians. Everybody's been listening to it, so what better which, place? And which we I appreciate. You, so I think it's, it's just a yes. great place to uh, kind of mm -hmm. clear the air and let everybody know what's going on. Mm -hmm. so, you do sponsor me. Uh, and I love doing it. No, oh, well, thank you. I love you. I love you doing it. But you know what? You always ask me to listen to your show, and I never get a chance to listen. Don't say that. I know. Don't let them know. Oh, my God. Listen to the show. Listen to the show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, so a couple seriously. weeks ago, yes. I put out a. Was it a couple weeks ago? Now I put uh, out two or three a weeks, Facebook yeah. post mm -hmm. that we weren't going to have hourly bands here anymore. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, this place to me is a hourly bands is near and dear to my heart. That's what you know. As you know, the uh, hourly bands has always been something we love to do here. Yes, but I think you remember maybe off of your first uh, interview that with me that. I never opened it up initially for that. Right. It's just something that kind of happened. Right. It happened. So, you know, here I am. Um, I'm not a woe is me guy. I don't, you know, ever try to come across that way. I try right. to work, work as hard as I can, do as much as I can to keep all the little dreams and entrepreneurship ideas I put together going forward. Right. You're always working on something. It's always something. That's why you never have time for me. But, you know. That's why I never get mad at you for not having time for me. I'm happy you don't get mad at me. Okay. I might have more time for you. You never know. Oh I doubt God. it. But oh, my God. I'll try. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Go ahead. No, but uh, for real, um, the uh, hourly band situation really boils down to we were doing well, I think, financially, uh, monthly with the hourly bands. I don't think it has anything to do with finances at this point. Right. You know? Um, you know, part of it is we don't make, I think I tried to tell everybody this before, like the studio doesn't make any money. You know, we're four years here. It was, right. It's my goal to obviously was try to make some money here. But um, you're aware, and most of the folks that come here are aware that I had to start a whole nother job, a whole nother business, a whole nother something just to be able to run this and mm -hmm. take care of my personal self and family financially. Right. And I think, and I think you might've touched on that on yeah. your first episode. Yeah. I mean, I don't think anybody really knows the uh, extent to everything and that's okay. Um, you know, it, this was a dream of mine uh, to run bands here at night. Wasn't the initial, um, but I thoroughly enjoyed doing it. It's, right. It's, after retiring from the military, I thought this was going to be my home, a place I could, you know, uh, initially I was hoping it would be a home for four guys that I had in a band. We talked about that last time, too. Yep. And I love those guys. And those guys have, you know, kind of gone on to do um, the dreams that I think I wanted to do, that I was pushing for with them, with this place. Right. That, and, that was the reason. Right. And by the way, uh, for you guys that have not heard that first uh time that david was on my show go listen we'll wait okay i'm done waiting <laughs> so anyway the, we we did cover a lot of ground on your first episode yeah. so uh there's a lot of the history about your show so seriously if you guys have not heard that go listen to it um catch you up to speed on how the how lms was formed and born and all that kind of stuff and and um 
that leads us to where we are now. So back to what you were saying. So basically, um, you know, I decided to come on here, one, obviously, to clear the air about what's going on with the studio. So mm-hmm. I'm not shutting down. Um, I'm not shutting down because of finances. You know, I mean, I think the studio can self-support itself now. And that's a, that's a huge thing after four years, which just based on local musicians. <laughs> right. You know, you're here now all the time. So you see how many people we have in and out. Yeah, Mark I was being a smart ass when I said my home away from home. But I'm, it's actually true. I'm here almost every day. That's how it's become for most of the musicians here. Mm-hmm. At least the, even the ones that rent the rooms. Mm-hmm. This is a place that is professional. It's not... It's not a crappy place. You know, mm-hmm. I didn't design it that way. No. But now, um, you know, um, after everything, and um, I've been working, man, 16, 18 hours a day, and that's what a business owner does. That's what we're supposed to do. Right. You know, we're build, I'm building something from scratch. Um, unfortunately, man, um, at this point, I can't continue to do hourly rehearsals. One, um, there's not a, another structured business owner here with me to help – run all the numbers, keep people paid, figure out scheduling on top of another business that I have hundreds of clients there too. Right. And, and, you know, employees and, um, and what really sucks about the whole thing, man, is I developed that basically just to keep this open and right. make sure that we could create it. And now here we are, we've created, I think, greatness. And, uh, I've reached out to, and, and you're aware of this, I've reached out to all kinds of people in this community. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you and the, I have had several conversations the away bottom, from the mic, obviously. Yeah, ab- absolutely. And the, the, the truth of the matter is is that um, the, initial, the initial folks, although I love them and they are my friends, and, and um, some of them, uh, you know, one being my good friend Vic. You remember we talked about a song he had mm-hmm. um, on the last show? Well, you know, it made it up to Octane. It's doing real good, and I'm very proud of him. He's a good, one of my best friends, right. you know. Um, but... You know, the, the goal of this whole thing was to create it um, so I could survive and, and keep uh, keep playing music and doing what I love, a, a dream and a passion that I always had. And uh, it's it's hasn't worked that way. Right. I, I haven't played drums like you in the last, you know, two years, you know, here and there, a couple things. But that passion is now gone because I'm stuck in, in the business mode of all this. Right. And I love the business mode. It's one of my favorite things to do. And had this been 10 years ago and I not already had a, uh, you know, whole military career and, and everything, I probably could manage every single piece. Right. But right now I can't manage every single piece. And in order to make everything successful, all the pieces of this music business has to work. Right. You know, from uh, management to recording to rehearsal, like there's a whole thing. It, it takes a team. Oh yeah, and, for uh, sure. I've had a awesome team members here man i mean we've talked about them you know keith stinson's a good friend these guys just came in and devoted time and mm-hmm. and um and and really put in and helped me out here it's not that they didn't it's um the same thing with aaron chamberlain you know mm-hmm. came in and helped me out um you know vic ritchie stayed here and helped me build it it's when it got too busy um and it got to be too much in everybody's lives everybody kind of moves on from it and right. i'm still here um, and then I, it's always me trying to figure out how to keep it going on my own. And I just can't do that anymore. So we're going to end the hourly rehearsals um, right. starting June 1st. Um, we are, I am going to keep half this building open to my monthly tenants, the, like you that rents a room here and, mm-hmm. and the other tenants that rent a room, they're going to still have their rooms. Um, the, the two rooms in the main part of the building, studio one and two that we lease out, Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep leasing those for the time being, um, between three bands. They'll have their own day, their own, you know, 24 hours in that day, but one day a week they'll have keys and codes. They can come and go as they please and they'll run their own sound. Right. Um, and we're just going to do one monthly fee for those guys. Um, these are bands that have been with me here from the beginning that have been coming even before I had doors in all the rooms. Right. So I offered them a place because, uh, I don't want to give up on everybody, you know? Um, and it's, uh, you know, I don't have to do much with this side of the building. The other side of the building, I'm probably going to turn in more for my hardwood flooring company. Right. And, um, just because, now that I've been thrown into that business, um, it's very busy, and I've got to take care of all my kids, and that's that's the best way to do that. Right. So I'm going to keep this here and keep it going as long as you know the the community will support it, meaning that people continue to rent rooms and um, keep wanting to come back here in the day that I can actually 
maybe slow down some, I'll come back and open it up again for hourly rehearsals. Right. And, uh, you know, try to maybe uh, go forward with all the dreams that I had. Unfortunately, right now, um, you know, a lot of people know and then a lot of people don't know is, you know, I'm, I am a disabled veteran. And I right. do have a lot of uh, personal health and uh, a lot of personal problems that I have thrown by the wayside. You know, I had a, I had my first heart attack at the age of 38, and I don't even know how many months ago that's been now, eight or nine months ago. Something you know? like that. And it, it's, uh, I didn't do anything to take care of it since, you know. And a lot of it is stress-induced, and, uh, you know, uh, a lot of it is kind of wrapping myself sometimes around the wrong people that I think are going to help me business-wise that don't. Right. And uh, puts a lot more stress on me, and that's happened several times. So I think at this point I'm just tired. Um, you know, I'm tired of picking up the phone and trying to make the relationships within the music industry. I'm trying to, you know, tired of maybe trying to, uh, trying to get everybody's hopes and dreams to move forward. Um, I haven't taken care of myself enough. So, right. And um, that makes, and you have to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, uh, that's the thing, man. I've, uh, I've, I've shed a lot of tears over kind of this cause I feel like the dream is kind of going away a bit that I'm stuck in other things created because of this dream I had. So, right. You know, it's just, uh, it, it's tough to do. And um, it, it, it took me a long time to make the decision to do it. And uh, I don't know if it'll always stay open as a music studio. I'd like everybody to keep coming. And I hope that I can, you know, find my passion again for it. Right. Um, but uh, right now it's just kind of, just kind of gone. So I'm going to leave this side open, let the musicians still do what they do. And, uh, if things work out and things get better in a couple, two, three years, and I feel like I can turn this into what it was supposed to be, I have the capital and the backing and the things to do to do it right, maybe I'll do it again. But, um, you know, right now that's up in the air. No, and, and I get that. And, I mean, I've you and I have had several conversations, like I said, and I think that there comes a point when, you've been looking at something for so long, you don't fucking see what was originally supposed to be there. Right. And I get that. And I think outside looking in, meaning me looking at you, I think that's kind of where you are. I don't, I wouldn't say that you're not passionate about this. Just from my perspective, I would say exactly what you said a few, a few minutes ago. You're just tired. Yeah. You've, you can only beat your head against the wall for so long before you go, fuck this wall is not breaking in. I'm going to break my head first. And I get that. I've been there. Nothing on this scale, but I've been there before several times. So I get it. And I don't know if anybody, I don't know if anybody would really blame me for it. And if they do, fuck them. It's your yeah. business. Well, you know, a lot of people <laughs> said, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's my decision ultimately. And I know that. But here's the thing. Your is, name's uh, on the building. I'm just saying. Yeah. But I mean, you know, at the beginning, like this wasn't built for, I never planned on trying to make fortune and fame out of the music business. It's no. just, it's not really there. It's not there as a business owner in the music business. Usually, you know, for most, I mean, it's there for some, don't get me wrong. It's oh, not absolutely. a big way, but, um, for most that are doing it, we're, we're doing it to try to make a regular living, right? right. Pay your bills during the year, maybe be able to support a family off of what you do. Like that's the ultimate goal to do your, you know, have your passion and be able to support the home life. Right. Right. live right and um you know this place is uh it has a lot of variables and a lot of people in and out and um what i really feel like here is ultimately um i'm a i'm a team guy i was in the military i i, I lead teams i work with teams so when i built this it was designed with people that sat down and agreed that it would be run as a team right um and it's not that some of those people didn't help me put it together. It's that, that that team didn't stay together. And it's very hard to try to bring in new teammates in which you don't know. And then into an entrepreneurial idea that doesn't have flourishing cash in and out of it. Right. You know, it's a, it's a build concept. And um, it takes somebody that wants to risk everything like I have. Um, there's not many people to do that. Right. It takes, you know, it's a select group um, that will kind of risk everything for an idea or a dream. Um, and uh, like I said, had it been 10 years ago and, you know, had I not suffered from uh, the crap that I just suffer with every day just from my prior life. Right. Um, I probably could do it all. And, uh, you know, I used to manage and lead hundreds of 
people at a time, you know, and multitask everything. I probably could, but right now, mentally, and in, in what I've done in a career prior to this, I can't do it. Right. You know, and uh, I've learned that you know, in the business world, there's not there's not a whole lot of people to reach out for. You know, you're kind of running at the top of your thing, and there's only you to reach for to try to get something accomplished. And yep. I can't operate that way. You know, now, so. and that makes complete sense. I, I I've noticed, and I talk to, I guess I'll use the people I work with in my day gig because they're between the ages of twenty two and thirty six. Um, so they're obviously younger than us, but. And, and I hate to be that crotchety old fucker, but there's such a difference in the mindset in the generations. And I think there's also that huge difference of everything is immediate with technology and internet and phones and all that bullshit. So I don't know if people necessarily work as hard as they used to. Right. If that makes any sense. So when you have something that you're trying to build and you're basically doing the whole fucking thing alone... At some point, you turn around and go, fuck, I don't want to do this anymore. Right. It's it's a different concept. Principle's the same, or different situation, I should say. Principle's the same. It's a basic reason why I ended gas money. When Jeff left and then Todd said he wanted to leave and he finished out the year, and none of us have any bad blood, but it was one of those things where, fuck, I don't want to rebuild this and do this band again because right. I have to start over. And even though we had a good name, we were making good money, and I had great contacts, I just was like, no, I don't want to do it. I'm fucking tired of dealing with it. I'm going to put a bullet in it and end it. And I did. So, I, I, like I said, it's different concept and not on the scale of this building and everything, but the principle's the same. No, you, just get the same. you just get tired of doing it sometimes, and you're just like, oh, I need a fucking break. I yeah, get and it. It's, and that's the thing. It's like... Uh... Oh, I didn't really want the break. It's not not necessarily what I'm looking. It's just no, me, no, 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 like not so many... the break. A break from all the stress and right. all the shit, and with your health stuff. And you had a heart attack last year. I mean, fuck, dude. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot, man. It's, yeah, um... you need a break from that. And I don't give a shit what you say. You don't need a break from life. You don't need a vacation per se, but from all the stress that you're piling on top of yourself. Yeah, you fucking need a break from that. But man, I, I think what I want the um, the listeners to know, whoever you know. Do you, how many listen? You got any listeners? I got one or two, one or two, maybe the, three. So the two listeners that listen to this, what I want them to know, hi Steve, <laughs> is that uh, you know this place is um, is a dream type of place for the city, and I know that now um, after being here for four years and seeing what it's capable of. Right. It's amazing. Um, what an amazing amazing accomplishment just to get through, just oh, to yeah. see what we've got going on here, and you know, and once again just because of lack of capital and things, I still never advertised it. There's no telling what the potential was or is, but it's just, um, man, I spend a lot of nights, you know, uh, when it's late and I get in and I'm just going, I'm, I'm too old to do it at this, this rate anymore. I kind of finally admit to it. It's like, it's too much. And people told me, they said, you're going to get burned out. And people in the studio told me that you got to be careful, Dave, you're going to burn yourself out. And I think I've told you that before. Sure everybody has. Yeah. And, um, but you know, when you're doing something from nothing and you have no money and no backing, um, which is fine. I mean, that's what it's all about. Then you push that hard. And if yeah. you push that hard, you will see success. And I have seen success through this place by pushing that hard. Oh yeah, for sure. Like I said, though, you know, 10, 15 years ago, had I done this as a career before my other, I would be able to handle it, you know, but, uh, mentally and physically now it's like my brain just can't comprehend all the parts and, you know, you want somebody to take over those parts, but it, it takes a certain somebody to do it no i get that so i think the 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 end conclusion is lms isn't going anywhere but you're pulling back the reins because you kind of fucking have to right right so in uh in time it could go right back to where it was sure possibility of and i'm not putting words in your mouth you can tell me to go fuck off but uh, the possibility of maybe reopening in a, in a in a little while as far as the hourly rehearsals and the stage room and all that bullshit. Right. But to be clear, the monthly rentals aren't going anywhere. They're not going anywhere. You're not um, evicting me, right? No. no Good. <laughs> um, we are raising the rent, though. We'll talk about that. Fuck. <laughs> God damn it. No, but, um, you know, and that's the other thing. I never really raised rates here, and a lot of people say, well, why don't you raise your rates on these hourly rehearsals? Mm -hmm. And, uh, sure, 
I could raise the rates, and I think some people would, obviously, I, I think most of the people would pay more. So right. I don't think it's about, I couldn't raise the rates a bit here. Um, no, you definitely could. Yeah. I Except think on my room. Don't raise my room. I think it's about, um, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Well, yours is left alone for sure. You're the special guy. You're special. <laughs> you should be treated different than everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what that means, kids, is he fucking charges me double. Double. We don't charge you enough. But uh, no, no, for real, though. I mean, this place, it, you know, I do it a certain way. You right. Know, there's a there's a way to, the, why does this place do well? It's not just because there's rehearsal spots here with decent sound. Do the people run the sound? Is there customer service? Can you be in and out of the room? And that's what it takes here. And I've got to be able to one day afford employment here that runs based off a service. We right. provide a service. And um we're not quite to that point so you know over time when i can't be here you start to you know things kind of it doesn't run the way i would run it if that makes sense you it know does. it runs fine the guys do great here i'm not ever going to down any of my people because they're amazing right but it was initially designed for me to run it and build a concept you know too much too many things happened um, right um in order for in order for me to keep building that concept so I've said it before, I'll always welcome ideas and I'll always welcome people that want to come in that, you know, that want to hear my vision on how it would work and, and see my business plan. But um, right now, I've been everywhere, shook all kinds of hands, talked to everybody. Um, oh, I know. You, know. you and I have had some conversations. It, it never ends. And I'm finally ready for that to end, you know, for right now. And, um, I'm kind of doing it with my other business and you know, there's a possibility some days that I don't want to keep my other one just because once again, I got a beautiful mind that could take all these things to a whole new level, but right. doing it on my own where I'm at in my life is, is too, too much. So you need a team of minions. I mean, well, I have a team. I have good. No, team, no, 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 no. But a team of minions. You oh, so the minion team. I don't even, I've never even watched the minion movie. Doesn't matter. Is that bad? No. Okay. No, I have, but I just meant minions as in plural people that like, will do what you tell them to. I was thinking more of like the movie, like Multiplicity. Is that? I don't know what that little is. Little Michael Keaton, uh, make like three or four, clone yourself like four times. See, I haven't seen work. that movie. Yeah, you should yeah. check it out. That was from the 80s, right? If I could clone myself, this would be great. I know it's not from the 80s. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what I don't think it's from the 80s. I don't know. God, it could be. Who knows at this point? <laughs> But anyway, wow. man. Yeah, I mean, it was... Um, so here's the things. Um, just because I don't know, just because everything is up in the air, mm -hmm. and, and we're going to start this June 1st, um, certain people that I do want to say thank you to, and, mm -hmm. and I've put some shout-outs to them already, but they need to know that I do care about them, and I, you know, and I do appreciate everything. And it's not that they didn't do exactly what they needed to do, because they did. Right. Um, but um, it's important that I, you know, thank uh, my my good friend Vic Ritchie for being here and mm -hmm. putting this place together and helping build it. And uh, of course, Aaron and uh, and Keith. And uh, what I do need everybody to know too is Justin. Everybody's come in. A lot of people that have come in here know Justin now. He used mm -hmm. to run sound for everybody. Now we started the recording studio. I'm going to allow him to keep that going. It's his business, and I want to see it um, do very well for him. He's very I do good. He is good. I've heard a lot um, of his shit, and, and he's a good dude. Oh, and he's a great dude, and we did a lot of work here, and I worked with a lot of people I know to also help him get better, think outside the box, do different things mixing and recording-wise now that he's got. He's right. got it. Um um, he's going to um, challenge, I think, most of the guys that are doing any recording in this city for sure and probably beyond. So I do encourage people to keep uh, getting a hold of him and uh, coming here to record. If, uh, you know, for your listeners, if they just go on and uh, look up Max Klinger, that's mm -hmm. who he is on Facebook. He's yeah. not on ju under Justin, but he's under Max Klinger from uh, MASH. Mm -hmm. um, so look him up. and uh, Yeah, good you know. dude. And, and he does. I've heard a lot of his stuff that he's recorded. Right. Some and, of the stuff you played on. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And, and he, he doesn't give himself enough justice. So he's kind of lowered he his don't. price since I'm not running it right now. He's lowered his price a bit. Um, hey, dog, and, you're fucking good. Own it. But it's a good price. Yeah. And so somebody's going to get an amazing quality product here at a good price. And he's still going to be using the great studio that I created that's mm -hmm. got great sound and mm -hmm. uh, great drum tracking. 
so he still has access to all that he'll still be doing it in here um i'm just going to take a step back i am however going to continue to manage one band i've talked to you about that I have a project that yep. i'm um those guys are near and dear to my heart and so i'm going to keep um, nice people. managing them yeah very nice people um, but i'm not going to take on any more past that not right now no fair enough so dude i get it uh, listen i we joke and we give each other shit and and listeners of my show know that i talk about stacy all the time and you know stacy but she gives me shit all the time because i'm always trying to stuff 15 pounds of shit in a two pound bag mm. you're 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 the same way except you're trying to do 30 pounds of shit in a two pound bag at some point you're the bag's gonna break or you're gonna break right you need to stop before both happen yeah I just I, and i get that you kind of just want you have a goal though you know mm -hmm. you're gonna push as hard as you can to try to get it even if it kills you well, i mean most some some do some um, do um and uh that's me i've always been that way and i'll always be that way and um but you can still do it safely right this was a dream that started out um it, it started out with just playing music right and uh Man, lose the evolved vest. In, in so lose the vest, right? <laughs> it, it, it evolved in so many freaking, and I've seen you with the vest on again. It's ridiculous. I don't. I, I mean, <laughs> get on to me about a vest. You wear a vest. You're the biggest girly man I've ever met. Listen, no, do, you have but, a, do you have a point to make about me being girly? I don't have any point to make. Yath, bitch. You're definitely girly. <laughs> Yath, bitch. And you have the beautiful, most beautiful shaved arms any man could possibly have. Yath, bitch. <laughs> But no, really, that's it. That's all I've got to put on your show for now. Um, obviously, I'm not upset with any musicians, friends, or anybody else. Right. Um, uh, well, and I think that's love from, this community from our from our perspective because I actually received a few, uh, and I'll talk about this on the show because you and I have already talked about it. I got a few messages um, in various forms of communication about what was going on here, and I I had no idea. I said I don't know. I haven't talked to David. It's his fucking studio he can do whatever the hell he wants to with it but but i don't know i said i'm pretty sure that it's not bad i don't think it's a bad thing i said but i don't i don't have a clue i haven't fucking talked to him right uh and then you and i talked about it and i went oh all right so where my brain went i was kind of close um but i think that everybody needs to know and this is where i kind of get on my soapbox Anything anybody does, if you believe in that person and you're half-assed close to them, fucking support them. Period. This is not to buy local. That's not what I'm talking about. So that's a whole different argument. If somebody does something, support them. And here's the cool part that everybody seems to forget. If you do that, the people you supported, they will in turn support you. And I hate to be the fucking Captain Obvious douchebag that I'm known to be, apparently. If you don't support me, but you want me to do something for you, chances are I'm not going to fucking do it. That's not because I'm a dick. That's human nature. That goes for everybody. Hey, I didn't support you for the last four years, but I'm doing this new thing. Will you do it with me? Uh, no. Right. But the only reason I phrase it that way is because I think if we all supported each other instead of being shitty or being questioning or trying to form 47 different cliques of musicians in town or trying to feed your own ego or your own agenda, I think a lot of things would be a little bit easier. That doesn't necessarily have anything to do with where you are in your life, uh, Mr. Payne, but I think that does help a little bit maybe why people could kind of go, all right, I get that, that makes sense. And how you arrive to the place where you are now. And that, again, like you said, and, and I'm agreeing with you, it's not blaming anybody. It's not anything like that. But you fuckers know who you are. And well, I mean, we, half of you probably don't even listen to my show. So. There, there's, <laughs> been, there's been so many that were just say, oh, it could never work there. That could never work, um, what we're doing here. And uh, well, why not? You know, absolutely, it can't work. It, it, yeah, it, it can. It is working, and uh, it, it did work. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I knew it would. And it, it would continue, but it, it does take everybody um, to do it together. It takes, takes a village, fuckers. Um, it does, and and that's what I wanted ultimately here. But you know, I opened this up before I you know really had time to kind of decompress from a past life mm -hmm. and uh, take care of myself and uh, 
I was pushing for a dream that every musician has. Right. And this was just a piece of that puzzle, um, which turned out to be the largest piece of the puzzle. Right. And we can't be having you having a heart attack. No, 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 no. I can't be having a heart attack. No, we don't like that shit. That shit's <laughs> fucked up. But uh, no, I, uh, I don't want anybody to think we're gone forever. I don't know what the you know the future holds, but the building's here. It's a speed the, bump. The rooms are here. It's a speed bump. Yeah. And we'll call it a speed bump. A speed bump. I don't ex- probably don't expect to see me on Facebook. I, I really haven't even talked to friends or family or answer phone calls. Or I'm in one of those moods. So oh, um, I know. Basically, Jesus this will Christ, be a good show to let everybody know that I'm uh, I'm still alive. That's why when and, you called uh, me this morning, I about freaked out. I was like, Oh, he actually dialed my number. Oh, I bet he butt dialed me. I bet he butt dialed me. I should have said that. It's just oh, I'm sorry, butt dialed you. <laughs> Never mind. Dude, this ridiculous show of yours. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> No, I love that you do the show. It is kind of ridiculous, um, actually. No, it's awesome, man. I, and I love, uh, you know, you do have um, quite a few listeners. And a lot of the people that come to the studio listen. So Yay. Um, I'm I'm happy that um, they're, you know, they'll get to hear it uh, from the from horse's mouth. From the horse's mouth. mouth. Yeah. I was getting and, ready to uh, say that. And I, that's the way I wanted it to be. And I don't do these Facebook Live bullshit things. I thought about doing it, but uh, screw all that. I'm not, I'm not getting into all that. No, I get it. Facebook will probably go away just because there's too many things on there, too many people I, I just don't want to talk to right now. you know. But um, this will still be open as mm-hmm. a room comes available. Mm-hmm. We'll put something out, letting people know that there's a new room available um, mm-hmm. for monthly, or or one of the you know the share rooms that we're doing as a band comes out. Right. I'll advertise a, a room, and I'm going to keep those rooms beautiful the equipment's going to be nice everything's going to run right and just like always yep um we won't run sound but man the boards i put in these rooms are they're designed to preset sounds and um they're you can train a band to kind of do the do the same thing every week and they'll get the same sound and be able to turn it on themselves so we'll set that up and if i'm only managing three a room it's a lot easier to manage than you right. know 25 bands a week so, no i get that well, cool, man. Well, cool. well. Uh, anything else you want to add? No, man. If that uh, answers all the questions, there's probably a million things I want to say. And for everybody that if I didn't mention you or I said something that uh, upset you, well, go fuck yourself. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> but uh, really, if uh, you know, um, last time I, I failed to I mention did that people this morning. and thank yous and this and that, and I don't, I don't do interviews, man. I didn't really want to get into all that. Um, so, I really wish to God I had a camera in here. This is the coolest shit ever. So Keith just came in here and totally fucking stole a set of hi hats that were leaning against the wall about hats. three feet in front of me, and that motherfucker didn't make a sound. This is that was impressive. Yeah, that's how we work around. That here. was impressive. That's for a client. I know, but I'm just saying that was impressive. Do you see how he was willing to interrupt our interview very quietly, yeah. step over our cords, no shit, steal the symbols with. He touched a stack of symbols and didn't make a fucking sound. No noise. I love you, Keith. See, that's the kind of people we like to have around here. I know. I really don't like Keith. I hate him. I love Keith. I what love Keith. I'm just kidding. How can I say I hate him after I just scream like that for him? You're such a screamer. <sighs> Stacy, is he a screamer? No. <laughs> Edit all this out. No. I've had enough talking to you. <laughs> goodbye, I'm signing off. Do I have to say anything? Do I have any special goodbyes to say? Signing off. I love you, fucker. David Payne. Love everybody. <laughs> Yelly, baby. Everybody loves everybody. <laughs> thanks for calling me this morning, dude. Hey, thanks for having me. Oh, anytime. All right. You are always welcome here, sir. All right. Are you going to go back and practice now? You need it. No, I do need it, but no, because that means I would have to reset my drums up, and I'm just not fucking doing that today. Okay. Because I got another rehearsal tomorrow. Good for you. Yeah, I know you don't care, <laughs> but I'm telling you anyway. Rehearsal. Better you than me. Oh, brother. Between all the shit I'm doing, I have PTSD from rehearsal now. I'm I, I don't even have song soup anymore. You know what I have? I have song goddamn restaurant chain. That's what the fuck I have with all the songs in my head. I hear you play a million of them in there. Oh my god! And right. I don't even know which ones are which because there's so many now. Motherfucker, I don't even know which ones are which, and I'm playing them. That's ridiculous. It is ridiculous, but all you right. know what? I love it. I gotta go run sound for these guys. I gotta go pee. All right, see ya. <laughs> see ya. Hey guys, this is Steve Owens from Fascination Street Podcast here with a very important message. I'm awesome. I bet you thought I was going to say something else, but nope. What's important here is that I am awesome. I have a podcast called Fascination Street, and it allows me to bring to my listeners some of the most fascinating stories and guests. I started this show because I truly believe that everybody has a story, and I'm fascinated to hear those stories. 
In the short time I've been doing this show, I've interviewed actors, directors, writers, inventors, podcasters, musicians, pro athletes, Olympic athletes, actual war heroes, even a Bond girl and a luthier, whatever the hell that is, and of course, regular people. From people who wanted to be stars but never gave it a real try, to big company CEOs and people who got to meet their favorite president. I love getting to meet and speak with people who have a story to tell. I feel like everyone does, and it's my job to get them to tell it. You never know who my next guest will be. An Academy Award winning actor, a platinum selling musician, or your own mother-in-law. But one thing is for certain, you will be fascinated by their story. So come take a walk with me down Fascination Street. You can find this show on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and of course, FascinationStreetPod.com. Well, that's it, kids. That's the show for the week. I hope that clears up some stuff. Uh, David felt good when we got done recording. Um, He's, like he talked about in the episode, it's a lot of it is... Not personal, personal, but a lot of it's personal, and there's a lot that goes into running a business, and he's just a one-man show, and sometimes it just becomes hard to be a one-man show. So I hope that clears up some stuff for my Louisville people, for my non-Louisville people. I hope you guys at least enjoyed it, because like I said at the beginning of this, Dave and I always have a few good laughs. We like to give each other shit and bust each other's balls, because that's what we do. I don't really know why our relationship is that way. It just, just is. It's... It's literally weird. Anyway, it was cool of him to call and want to clear the air on my show. I appreciate it. David, you are the bomb. Thank you very much. And um, that's it. I hope that uh, that clears up some stuff. And like he said in the episode, you can get a hold of him anytime. You can get a hold of me. Whatever you need, we will try to make happen. And yes, my secret project, my secret project is still there. And yes, my secret project is about to be released um, but in the meantime, here, like I said at the beginning of this episode, are the actual venues and the dates that the Delana Tour is going to be comprised of. So the June 21st is at a place called Fat Heads in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Looked at some pictures. Pretty cool looking venue. June 22nd is a place called Sandy Hook in Hazel Green, Wisconsin. Uh, that place looks pretty neat as well. June 24th is Eastside Bar and Grill in London, Ontario, Canada. That's a fucking mouthful. That's a lot of words. Uh, all these places, by the way, look really cool. I've looked at some of the pictures and shit. and Because uh, obviously I've never been to any of them. So they look pretty cool. June 26th is Rockstar Music Hall in Windsor, Ontario, Canada. June 28th is Earth Angels Holistic Health LLC in Cleveland, Ohio. That's actually a cool little show. Uh, It's going to be acoustic, semi-acoustic. We're not going to be completely rocking out, but we're going to be rocking out because Delana can't help herself because she's a fucking badass. She always rocks out. Uh, And the band, us three, have been rehearsing our asses off, and we've been rocking out. So uh, Steve, Ben, and myself have been... uh, if I do say so myself, we've been killing it. Everything's been awesome. So that show's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to that one. It's going to be a little different. I'm looking forward to all of them, but that one's going to be different. And last but not leastly, that's right, motherfuckers, I said it again, is the Firehouse Barbecue and Blues in Richmond, Indiana. And I've had a few people message me about that place, and I don't know anything about it, but apparently it's it's kind of uh, pretty well known in the region. Uh, I think it's only two or three hours from here. I've heard a few good things from a few different people about that place. They've they've spoken highly of it, said it's a great venue, they got great food. I don't know. I've obviously never been there. But for my Louisville people, that is only two or three hours away since we couldn't make a Louisville show happen. If any of you decide you want to take a little road trip to see Miss Delana and her crackpot band. I'm just kidding. If you guys wanted to drive up, that would be awesome because um, I know the... We couldn't get a Louisville date scheduled. We couldn't get it booked. We couldn't get it finalized. We just, things couldn't come together. It's hard with her living in Holland because she obviously uh, cannot be away forever in 47 days. So we shall see what the future holds. I don't know. She doesn't know. We don't know. Nobody knows anything. Either way, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be six shows uh, in a matter of 
to just eight days. Uh, so it's going to be a lo- cool little run, very small run, like I've said before. But it's still going to be a lot of fun. I'm so looking forward to it. I'm still super fucking excited. I'm still kind of pinching myself that I'm going to be playing drums for Delana. Uh, and like I said a few minutes ago, Steve, Ben, and myself have been rehearsing as much as we possibly can. And uh, it's been really awesome. It's coming together great. So I think it's going to be a fucking hell of a show. Uh, all six shows are going to be, I just think they're going to be badass. So anyway, my Louisville people. Richmond, Indiana is not that far. You want to drive up, hang out with us, that would be awesome. If you don't, that's awesome too. I still love your faces. But that's it. I'm out of here. I hope David Payne cleared up some things and everybody knows what's up. It's nothing bad. It's nothing good. It's just a reality and there's nothing more to it than that. So please make sure you check out all my shit. Tell all your friends about the show. And as I say at the end of every single fucking episode go do some shit seriously beat it get the fuck out of here I gotta go rehearse some more I got all kinds of shit coming up and you got all kinds of shit that you have to go do I'm sure there's way more important things you have to do than listen to my dumbass so that's it see you later gotta go and goodbye so until next time I will talk at you soon